Hey guys, good evening, it's Sunshine. So today in my kitchen, I will be making some good old neck bone soup. And I thought I would bring you guys along with the journey. And so we're just gonna get right into it. I'll start with the ingredients. I'm sure you saw the thumbnail, but um, yeah, we're just gonna jump right into the ingredients. Okay, so for this recipe, depending on how many people you're cooking for, um, I usually use, since I have a good number that usually um, I feed, then I usually start with two or three packs of um, neck bones. You can use pork neck bones or beef. Um, they're pretty cheap in the store. Um, as you see here, this package is $4. They're usually like 3 or $4, but nowadays you never know. So anyway, three or four packs of that. Um, I usually use the gumbo vegetables and a pack of um, mixed vegetables, you know, with just the peas, carrots, corn, and green beans. I usually uh, use one package of these and one package of those. But um, <clears throat> I have some vegetables that I have frozen from my garden. So I will be using one of these and just several uh, different uh, vegetables from my garden. Um, I usually use um, two cans of tomato sauce and if you have some um, canned up tomatoes um, like I have here stewed tomatoes or diced tomatoes you can use those if you don't have your own freshly canned um, tomatoes from your garden then you can um, use the ones from the store like this the diced tomatoes or the stewed tomatoes either one will do fine but I usually use um, two jars I mean I'm sorry yeah two jars or two cans of this as well and then the seasoning is pretty simple I just use salt pepper Italian seasoning and garlic powder granulated garlic or garlic powder or you can use some fresh garlic um, and that's it so we're gonna start by putting our neck bones into this big old soup pot which is another thing you're gonna need a big old deep um, soup pot or stock pot some people like to call it um, as you see I got some fresh um, okra back there and I'm gonna put some of that in there um, but yeah start by putting your neck bones washing them I wash mine um, off with some um, cool water and vinegar and then I put them into the stock pot and get them to boiling so that's what I'm about to do Okay, so as you see, I just have them dumped into the pot. I'm, applying, I'm just putting them under some cool water and some plain old white distilled vinegar. I just pour a little in there just to wash my meat off with. Swirl it around in there. Okay, I just swirl my meat around in there. Get it all nice and washed. All right, I had to pause and take my rings off there. All right, so just swirl it around, get it all nice and washed, and make sure I try to touch every piece of meat that's in here and run it through my fingers to make sure that I get it off. I say gunk that's on here, but whatever, I just want the meat washed. Some people don't even wash their meat, but I do. I wash mine. Um, I just run it through this water and then I drain it and I fill the pot back up with some clean water. Okay, after I drain the dirty water, then I refill the pan or pot, I'm sorry, back up with clean water. All right. Okay, guys, so I have it in the pot. I have it on the stove and um, I turned up the heat when I first put it on. I put it on uh, medium to high heat just until it gets that boil. And um, once it gets the boil, then you can turn it back down to medium heat. But you can go ahead and add your seasonings. As you see here in this bowl, I have the seasonings that we um, mentioned earlier, the salt, the pepper, the garlic powder, and the Italian seasoning. I say it's about um, a, tablespoon, a tablespoon or two of both, um, depending on your um, liking. Just season it to your liking. 
but um, yeah, you can go ahead and put that in there and mix it around and let it boil. I, I also forgot to mention one whole onion, so I'm going to um, take this one whole onion and um, slice it up and also apply that to the pot. All right, and there are the onions. No particular rhyme or reason on um, how to cut them. But yeah, you just take those and apply those to your pot as well. All right, hard to film with one hand, you guys. So yeah, just get those all in there. Mix them in, get your seasonings and your meat. And you just bring this to a boil, and this is gonna boil for quite a long time. Um, it usually takes neck bones quite a while to get done, but you want them to get nearly all the way done before you add your vegetables. So this is going to cook for probably about an hour or so. So, uh, yeah, see you guys in a minute. Okay, guys, you see it's at a high rolling boil, and there's my <laughs> camera fogging up. But anyway, this has been boiling now for 30 minutes. And as you see, since it's been cooking on kind of high heat, the water level has gone down. At this point, you can either turn the, the heat down or you can add a little bit more water. I'm going to add a little bit more water because um, once you put your vegetables in, it, it, it will also absorb some of that water. So yeah, about another two cups of water, enough to just cover the meat will be fine. And then you just continue to let it boil until the meat is... Uh, tender as you like at this point the meat is probably cooked all the way through but it is pork and I like my um, neck bones just about falling off the bone so I'm gonna cook them for approximately another 30 minutes okay next part okay so when your neck bones cook down to about looking this way where your meat is as tender as you like and at this point they're not falling off the bone quite yet but just about um, that's when I like to go ahead and add my sauce and vegetables so here we go and like I said you can use your um, tomato sauce in your cans or um, if you have them freshly jarred you can use those you can use diced tomatoes or stewed tomatoes Okay, and you just go ahead and pour them in. Pour in your sauce. Pour in some more sauce. Okay, and these are um, two of the, let me see what else. 15 ounce cans okay and like I have some freshly jarred ones or that I canned myself and I don't know why I guess I'm using all of the store-bought ones first I want to preserve mine because I have that food preserving can porn <laughs> addiction like I want to see my canned jars up on my shelf okay so let me get my uh, vegetables in Okay, after you get your vegetables in, then you want to add a little bit more water. And at this point, you can do water or um, chicken, chicken or beef broth, whichever one um, you like best. I just always fill my uh, cans back up with them. Um, a little water so that way I'm not losing any of my tomato sauce and <clears throat> you go ahead and give it a stir stir all your vegetables up in there get it nice and incorporated around your meat and you can add a little bit more seasoning if you like but I'm a little heavy-handed on my seasoning as you saw already so I usually like to wait until my soup is just about done and I'll give it a taste 
and if it needs a little bit more salt or pepper or if you want to make it a little bit spicy you can add a little crushed red pepper or hot sauce whatever you like so um, yeah so at this point you're just stirring up your vegetables getting your vegetables in there if you like a little bit more vegetables like I have some uh, Texas cream peas and some lima beans that I got from my garden that I believe I'm getting ready to add to it um, yeah let me do that okay so like I said yes I have some Texas cream peas here and some lima beans that I have saved from my garden and this is what I like to do with some of my beans um, after uh, if you don't have a big harvest some days or like these came from um, I had some bags that were full all the way to the top and I had some that were or this was what was left over so instead of um, not saving them then I just keep them in bags like this and add them to soup or other um, recipes that you know call for just a little bit so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and get those added into the pot as well all right so there we go again get those all uh, incorporated in there really good get your meat break that up and after you get everything all incorporated again you let it boil until the vegetables are tender as you like and uh, I'll come back and let you guys see what it looks like when it's done okay guys so I looked in my fridge and I still had half a head of cabbage left so instead of letting that go bad I'm just gonna add it to the soup as well and uh, yeah that'll just give it a little bit more flavor and a different texture but I am a veggie junkie when it comes to making my soup I like a lot of corn I, I just like a lot of vegetables period so yeah I'm adding this as well and again I will let you guys know what it looks like when we're done I think it'll be ready in about another 20 minutes or so and um, yeah we'll be back all right so here's what it should look like when it's done doesn't that look hearty and there you have it the good old country neck bone soup all the hearty vegetables your neck bones and on the side you can do some cornbread but what I have here is a cheddar bay garlic and cheddar biscuit just like they have at Red Lobster you do you if you don't like these types of vegetables you can use whatever kind of vegetables you like you can use as much as I have or less whatever you want to do to your liking if you guys like the video give it a thumbs up I hope you appreciate the video and like the recipe thanks so much for watching